What up, boys? It's Keith Urban. Back at you guys with a patch analysis for Brood. A Lamau. Alright, I don't want to make this video too long, so we're going to get right into it. Brood got hella strong. Let's start off by saying that. That's my thesis, my thesis if you will. Our level 10 talent uh, got completely reworked, except for the EXP gr uh, growth aspect of it, which I would even argue kind of got reworked just because of how significant the change was. They, on the one hand of the spectrum for the EXP talent, they buffed it by 10%. That's pretty incredible. Uh, I don't I don't really know how to convey that, the incredibleness of that buff, other than just maybe... I could link you guys a Reddit post that talked about all the XP talents pre-patch 7.02, where it showed that, on average, heroes were hitting level 25 about um, a level or two sooner, if that makes sense. So, where you would be level 23, if you had taken the EXP talent, you'd be, like, level 25. Which could shave anywhere from a minute to two to three. You know, it depends on the course of the game. But overall, those uh, those peaks in power every five levels, starting at level 10, are very strong for some heroes. Broodmother's no exception. When she hits level 25, it completely changes the hero um, and takes her spot, her her um, spin webs from and, and takes it from an eight web restriction to a 16 web restriction, which changes the entire course of the map, for that matter, um, as let alone the hero. So, um, this buff makes it so you can hit that peak sooner. And I would expect myself to uh, take this talent maybe a little bit more often now. It was already pretty solid if I ever went Midas and felt like I just needed to catch back up in terms of levels. Uh, but I, I usually kind of favored the plus 10 agility talent. The unfortunate thing, uh, if you'll even really call it unfortunate, is what they changed the option on the other hand of the spectrum, when the plus 10 agility as you can see, they changed that option to be plus 60 spawn spiderling damage, which is her nuke. and. Basically, they made her nuke do 21% more damage, uh, for reference, I did the math, um, and that is so incredible that I don't actually think I'm going to have room to take the 25% EXP talent, even though they did buff it, just because plus 60 uh, damage on her nuke, especially when that was one of your primary sources of damage in the mid-game, or at least team fight contribution, was uh, running around with Radiance, burning people, auto-attacking supports with your ulti and two-shotting them if you needed to. Um, but other than that, just kind of staying on the outskirts, burning people alive with Radiance, and then using your nuke to finish off targets, this is such an incredible buff to that very playstyle. And I would be surprised, I guess to say nothing else, uh, to see Brood at least not get considered um, as a pick this this patch, if you'll even call it that, 7.02. I don't know if this is a patch or if this is just like a another continuation, kind of like 6.88A, 6.88B, 6.88C. I don't, I don't know how he's doing the patches now. But if this truly is a new patch, even though the changes outside of the talent tree were relatively small, um, talent trees of most heroes got changed. Um, but outside of that, they were small enough. I don't necessarily know if this is going to like count as a new patch, but if it does count a new pat as a new patch, expect Broodmother to uh, at least get considered as a pick. If not, you know, pretty pretty high up there. Like, I would expect some Brood players to come out under the woodworks in the pro scene, because these changes are very significant. Um, at, I mean, just, again, we haven't even gotten to the other talents, but th this is a pretty significant talent change. If I'm honest with you, actually, the other talents kind of suck. Uh, the level 15 talent, they changed the plus 7 armor to the plus 250 HP that they were going to remove away from the plus 20 er, from the level 20 talent. This is just to make it not seem so redundant. Plus 7 armor was pretty solid. Plus 250 health is pretty solid. But you always, always, always at level 15. doesn't matter if this is plus 7 armor. doesn't matter if this is 250 HP. doesn't matter if this is 90 GPM or whatever equivocal level 15 talent that you would put on any other hero. 20% um, CDR on Broodmother is just so, so much. Um, I would maybe consider plus 15 uh, or like plus 15 armor or plus 500 HP but 20% CDR is still the go-to and I just I don't see that I don't see this change of changing the seven armor to 250 HP I don't see this really changing that option any in any way shape or form you know sure you might think oh 25 25 250 health is pretty nice you know that, that could keep me alive more often than plus seven armor would but no like 20% CDR is always going to save you more. It's always going to. It gives you eight seconds off of your web. It gives you two seconds off of your nuke. You know, it gives your ulti uh, like a plus or a minus 12 second cooldown. All of her active items, including including Solar Crest, which actually got buffed this patch, as well as um, like Bloodthorn if you needed it, uh, Mjolnir if you needed it, Shiva's Guard if you needed it. You know, pretty, BKB. Every single item that you get on Broodmother outside of Radiance, at least the way that I play her, is pretty much an active item. So. 
uh, you're always taking that 20% CDR. And as a result, I don't really see this change at level 15, um, the talent changing from 7 armor to 250 HP, changing that option that much. Like I mentioned, this change was mostly made so that at level 20, uh, at level 20 they could change the talent that used to give you HP, which was 300 health, uh, to plus 8 spiders attack damage. And if you didn't know, because this is kind of vague, um, it meant specifically spiderlings. I'm sorry, I had a game loaded up for us to look at, but uh, unfortunately that game ended. Um, this this plus eight spiders attack damage, just because I for a second actually thought it was plus eight, like all spiders. Um, and actually, this is, whoops. This is where clarity is a really nice thing for Ice Frog to maybe consider. Um, we're, we don't really even need to wait, check this out. So you, you'll see it says plus eight spiderlings attack damage plus 200 spiders health. It might seem vivid, you know, it, it might seem clear, but uh, especially in this where it just says plus a spiders attack damage, it's uh, it's a little bit unclear. It's like, uh, especially when you first read this, I could see somebody being like, plus 200, uh, or plus eight spiderlings attack damage, plus 200 spiders health. So does this uh, plus eight spiderlings attack damage uh, only apply to spiderlings or spiderites? Well, it says spiderlings, but the plus 200 spiders health, that applies to all spiders. But what about the patch that said plus eight spiders attack damage? Does that include every spider? Or does that include only the spiderlings? Like, I can see some, uh, some, some discrepancy, but rest assured, the uh, plus eight uh, um, spiderlings attack. Uh, I, I pretty much already proved my point. I don't even need to show it. Now we can show it. The plus eight spiders um, spiders attack is, is only for spiderlings. It's not for spiderites. Um, so if you're trying to go like full meme, like I'm brood mother, the mother of broods, and I only want to uh, buff my spiders up. Start game. WTF. Let's get a blink dagger. Oops. You're trying to go like full meme style, like I want to help my spiders as much as possible and make them stronger, some crap like that. Well, you can't really do that. I mean, you can, but it's terrible. So your spiderlings get 650 HP. Your spiderites have four, 375 HP. Um, but only your spiderlings are doing plus eight damage. Your spiderites, oh, they just, they just changed. I swear to God, they just changed that. But it doesn't make any sense though. It says spiderlings. All that. I don't even know if I can use this recording now because Ice Frog's changing some shit. Alright, I don't know if this is bugged, but the spider ants also have plus 8 damage. And they shouldn't have plus 8 damage, it's not like I have a Basilius or anything like that. Or Vlad's, I mean, sorry. So yeah, I guess spider ants get the damage too, even though this only says plus 8 spiderlings attack damage. Maybe Ice Frog realized how, how weak plus 8 spiderlings attack damage really is, especially at level 20. Um, the rant that I was trying to get at was um, how insignificant this change is, even to uh, even if it does apply to spiderlings and spiderites. Like plus fifty attack speed is always going to be. Like, in, I mean, I guess in short, that's always going to be plus fifty attack speed. You might be like, that's obvious. Like, of course, plus six, fifty attack speed is fifty attack speed. What I'm really trying to say is, plus fifty attack speed means a lot on this hero. Um, it's a, it's almost a free hyperstone. It's five attack speed short of a free hyperstone, and this is a hero that really, really craves attack speed. Right, um, you get like a radiance. Um, f even if you don't, you get like 120 bonus damage from her, um, from her, from her, from her, from her ulti at level uh, 18 now. Uh, really, all you ever needed was to hit targets quickly, so that you can get life steal, so you can life steal up really quickly, uh, because you already do enough damage with this talent alone uh, to heal to heal up quick enough. So. I don't really see this talent, the plus eight spider links attack damage, even if it applies to spider rights, I don't see that catching on as much myself personally. I could be totally wrong about this and like completely misunderstand the entirety of the hero, but uh, I don't think I am. Okay, I, I don't think that like, look, I, they don't farm anything significantly quicker. They still can't take ancients unless you, unless you have like a buttload of them. Um, I guess I don't technically have a web here, but I don't think that makes any big difference. They can, they got the same surround. I guess they can't, can't take ancients. I don't know. You still can't take patience. No, I'm just kidding, you can. Um, yeah, I guess you'll farm a little bit quicker if you take it, but I, I, I just, I don't know, I feel like the 50 attack speed is still just too hard to give up, myself personally. So you might be like, oh, but what about Solar Crest Wire? Do you even get Solar Crest to like amplify your, your damage? Well, 
I get Mock mostly to amplify the Spiderling's damage. Solar Crest, by the time I'm getting a Solar Crest, I'm usually uh, trying to use it on my allies or on the enemies to make my allies stronger. I'm not really caring too much that my Spiderlings might do a bit of extra damage by shredding their armor. And furthermore, I'm not going to take a whole goddamn talent just to, just to exacerbate that fact. Like, it's great if I'm still using Spiderlings for damage at that point in the game, but oftentimes I'm just too afraid of feeding too much of them, and I'd much rather use them for scouting, um, taking objectives, viewing objectives, right? Split pushing lanes so that I can just like send them off uh, at the very last minute when the enemy comes to rotate on them so they don't feed um, such that we can then fight a 4v5 team fight while they have some ally over here farming top um, getting like four melee creeps because all my spiderlings ran away and I just baited them into fighting a 4v5 right like I'm not going to be like oh man now since I have plus eight damage on every single one of my spiders I can just go kill the support in two shots like that late into the game, you're probably not going to be hitting anybody in two shots, because they're going to have significant armor values, they'll have their nukes, they'll have their abilities that are needed for them to AoE down your spiders. So, I'm not really craygasming over the plus A spiderlings attack damage, even if it does apply to spiderites like it apparently currently does, nearly as much as I'm craygasming over that plus 60 spawn spiderling uh, damage, just the nuke, the nuke. Uh, the bonus damage to the nuke, which currently it's bugged, it doesn't even show the uh, the tooltip damage, even if you hold alt. But uh, trust me, that is plus 60 damage. We could test it on a creep over here if you'd like to see further proof. Check the damage value, because I still have this stupid ass, um, this stupid, uh, what would you call it, what is an option put into place. So creeps have zero magic resistance, so this should do 300, oops, 340, 354. I don't know why it does 354 and not 360, uh, but the math is 360, so it should do 360, but... It's 354 right now, but still, um, you know, you're going to be hitting heroes with spell resistance, so it might do like 330 or 20 or something like that, but that's still a hell of a lot more than it used to deal, which was 280 minus spell resistance. It's a huge part of how you contribute in the mid early to mid game, and I wouldn't be surprised if this change alone pretty much nets her a, a solid spot in the pro scene, so long as, I don't know, so long as pros are willing to uh, experiment with her and try something like Radiance as opposed to constantly going Orchid. Anyways, because this isn't, these are not the only changes that they added to Broodmother, and indeed, I don't even, like, I think the plus 60 spawn spiderling damage is the most significant. I don't even think these really uh, do the hero justice if we only looked over these challenges, uh, changes. So, in short, TLDR, this is a big change, but let's also talk about uh, Sentry Wards. So Sentry Wards got buffed, if you'll call it that. Um, they, they didn't directly receive any, like, changes to them specifically. They still give up the same amount of vision. They uh, still, I don't know, they... They technically cost the same, if you will. Um, yeah, I, I mean, they didn't get changed in any significant way, except for the very fact that they don't purchase in packs anymore. They are now one per purchase, if that makes sense. You buy one century and you pay that gold for that one century. So instead of buying, instead of right-clicking this and getting two centuries by default, you get one. Um, as a result, they have the cost, have the cost of the century per purchase. Uh, I'm making this more confusing than it is. Really, instead of buying sentries in packs of two anymore, you buy them in one. You just buy them in solos. Solos? <laughs> There's a better way to say that. Um, you buy them by themselves, uh, and you pay for the, the price of, uh, of what one would cost you. So, what does this do? Well, this does a lot of things for Broodmother. You could argue that it buffs supports more for countering brood, countering brood than it buffs broods and, uh, than it buff broods. You could argue that this buffs supports more for countering brood than it buffs just brood specifically. But, and I'm not really here to say contrary to that, because I actually, I do think that, and more and more that I think about it, I, I do think this is more of a buff or a nerf to brood than it is a buff. Um, but I still feel like there's something worth mentioning how brood typically wants to leave the base with one sentry ward in her inventory at the start of the game, pretty much no exceptions, um, unless she thinks she's against the solo lane. Uh, if that is the case, uh, she doesn't even want any sentry wards. But in the case where she's against, uh, like, maybe a potential tri lane at the very least, right, where you're unsure or you, th you think it's going to be a tri lane, you always want one sentry, preferably maybe even two, but you don't ever want to oversell it, right? You don't want to buy any more detection than the enemy is. Preferably, you'd prefer buying less and just being intelligent about where you play your hero because uh, you can play around sentries. The enemy can't. They have to They have to buy sentries. They have to see you with them, right? If they don't, they don't see you, and then you're just a broodmother that they can't, they can't see you in a laning phase where you're incredibly powerful. So this helps you manage your starting gold a little bit better. You know, uh, I might personally, but uh, I, I predict... Uh, other people will experiment this, with this more and probably tell me what their thoughts are. You might start, instead of doing something like two centuries, um, spending 200 gold at the start of the game, uh, buying a century, buying a tango, and then uh, just like leaving the base with uh, with something like this. You might start just doing something like this, you know? Oh, God. Okay. So, 
got to drop it because I'm in WTF. You might just start leaving the, the base like this, right? And you'll have uh, 100 extra gold to spend or uh, save, you know, up for your soaring components. In fact, uh, I think you can even maybe buy a Sage's Mask or a Ring of Region. I don't think actually you can. These are 325. So no, you can't. You can't buy any of these components in addition to this. It's you only got 100 gold uh, more, which means you only you only start the game with uh, 250 gold now instead of 300 or instead of 150. But this still means that you have to hit um, like two less creeps in order to get your first component. So it means your items are just going to come two less creeps um, sooner, which is good. Uh, it lets you hit power spikes sooner in the early game, which is where you're somewhat most dominant. It's where dominant. It, it's where you definitely have a power spike and you want to take advantage of your hero. So this lets you get your medallion of courage that little bit quicker if you choose or I guess opt to only get one century. The main thing is you pretty much don't want to join a lane. Like I said, it's a, if it's a trial lane, you don't want to join that lane unless you have at least one century to begin with. Preferably, you know, in some cases you prefer to, but. I feel like we can start to play around that. You know, this change might incentivize us to just be incredibly intelligent with the one century that we uh, choose to start off with and just really quick to the finger. Um, and when it comes to sniping, the, the century that our opponents will inevitably, inevitably place on the ground. You know, I've gone through some landing phases only spending one century and I'll have three because maybe my, my own support will give me uh, one of his own and I'll be like, dude, I don't even know if I need the two. Uh, just because maybe I'm against a jungler and a, and a support and a carry um, and you know the supports in there just trying to stay alive much less uh, buy all these support items that he has he's got the burden of doing I place one century here and he comes to lane places one in the middle of the map I just eat that for free and then maybe he'll come over here and place another century over here I'll eat that and then it's like dog I got two extra centuries now I don't even need one of these um, I don't even I don't even need both of these I I got away with buying one century in the entire lane and you know, that's that. So what I'm really trying to get at is this just helps you manage your stuff more, uh, manage your money more. It's not a significant change uh, to the hero that I expect to break her, but it is nice. And uh, I'd like to see how this in, in tandem with all the other changes uh, impact the hero. So anyways, that's like the major changes. Uh, much outside of that, or I guess that's not the major changes. Uh, arguably, you could say the Solar Crest buff is a major change to the... Uh, hero than the same century war change but i think we already talked about this if we didn't just know that solar crest now gives you two extra armor gives you two extra armor takes away two extra armor from the opponent and gives your allies two extra armor if you apply it to them so overall that's a great change again that in uh, uh runs in tandem with your cooldown reduction talent that uh I, again i can't really see you ever not taking so um this change is really good it's good for the hero it's in every single way, but it's just good for the item as well, and I would be surprised if Solar Crest as an item doesn't rise a little bit more in the heroes that can make uh, take full advantage of it as well. Um, but yeah, I think that's really it in terms of Brood, and that's kind of just all I wanted to talk about. So uh, I appreciate it uh, for listening and taking your time to click on this video, even though it was kind of long and maybe unedited. Uh, hopefully you maybe... Maybe I got the cogs turning a little bit in your head if you were even remotely curious as to whether or not you should play Brood in 7.02. And if you currently do play her, then hopefully I got some cogs turning in terms of, in terms of how you might build her uh, in the coming patch, or I guess in the patch that is. So, anyways, without further ado, uh, I love you all, and uh, I'll catch you guys later. What up, boys? It's Keith Thurban. Back at you guys with a patch analysis for Broodmother this time specifically because that's all we care about. Let's get right into it.